Okay, now we should start our lecture. Today we continue the second lecture about the vessels. And today's topic, okay, yep. Yeah, today's topic, capillary exchange and regulation of blood pressure and flow. And here, our outcomes here, after our lesson, you, know, you will know about the local neural hormonal influence on vessel diameter. Where's my marker here? <clears throat> Uh, talk more detail about the uh, capillary exchange, how it working, and how they connected with uh, types of capillaries. And you will know about the demo, what is it, and the factors. Uh, pre uh, after that, we should, we found a demo in our body. Excellent. Firstly, firstly, we will discuss regulations of blood pressure and flow. Uh, first, what you must know is vasomotion. Vasomotion is a quick and powerful way of altering blood pressure and flow. I, I think you heard about vasoconstriction and vasodilatation before. Yes, guys, you hear me? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, easy way, we will discuss how, in which situation vasoconstriction works in which uh, situation was the dilatation work and what um, uh, what factors leads for this. And three ways for controlling was emotion is local control, neural control, and hormonal control. Local control of blood pressure and flow. Uh, it's calling out regulation. It's ability of tissues to regulate their own blood supply. Uh, they produce some factors that will constrict or delete, delete uh, their uh, vessels. Mostly it's arterioles and capillaries. Metabolic theory of, of the regulation uh, is about if tissue is inadequate, perfused, waste accumulates stimulating vasodilation, which increase perfusion. Uh, I hope it's understanding. Yes, if we have some ischemia, ischemia uh, it's ischemia is an adequate refuse of tissue. Uh, we activate dilatation, and dilatation lead, leads to more oxygen in this tissue. This um, dark, yeah. The main um, idea of bloodstream, the main function, it delivers oxygen and remove uh, metabolites like lactate, uh, CO2. Uh, and others, potassium, natrium, and other things. Mm, when waste are removed, vessels can, can constrict. And first, our uh, factors of autoregulation, it's about the active chemicals. It's the substances secreted by platelets, endothelial cells, and perivascular tissue that stimulate with emotion. We know about histamine, bradykinin, and prostaglandins. Uh, these three things uh, stimulate vasodilation. Uh, if we talk about the endothelial cells, you remember, yes, endothelial cells is part of the uh, capillaries themselves. They secrete prostacyclin and nitrate oxide. Uh, that these two things uh, vasodilates our capillaries, and endothelins uh, will be vasoconstrictive. Okay, but guys, you should know this. If we uh, should do as a constrict, we have endothelins, if we need to vasodilate our uh, vessels, we have prostacyclin, uh, nitric oxide, or histamine, bradykinin, and prostaglandins. Next thing, it's reactive hyperemia. Uh, you, you, I think you saw it every time. Um, for example, if blood supply cut off, then restore, flow increased about the normal. For example, in the real situation, when you uh, can see this react reactive hyperemia, uh, for example, in the winter, yes, so you go somewhere in the cold weather, and when you go outside or inside to the house, you can see the red redness, redness of your skin. This is reactive hyper hyperemia, because in the cold weather, 
uh, your vessels was constricted because they, we need to save our temperature inside our body. That's why we constrict our vessels. Uh, and when you go to the inside of the um, high, high uh, temperature uh, house, for example, your uh, capillaries will be delayed. And you can see reactive hyperemia in your skin. Uh, the second um, example, uh, do you know how uh, we measure our blood pressure? Do you saw it before? Maybe you practice it yourself in house, guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you know, when we measure our blood pressure, we have some cuffs uh, in the forearm. Uh, yeah, but in the arm here. Uh, and if you um, inflated our this hair cuff uh, and to, for too long time, uh, if when you inflated the cuff, you have some ischemia yeah, for skin uh, in the forearm, in the uh, fingers, because you pressed your vessels here. Uh, but when you loosen it, this cuff, when you take it off, you can see that your arm uh, fingers will be uh, rid ridden. Yes. This is the example of reactive hyperemia. Next one, uh, angio, uh, an angio angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels. This one very important for many diseases, for example, and for understanding something, for example, a cure uh, in regrowth of uterine lining after each menstrual period, uh, all girls have menstrual period every month. And uh, this ability for angiogenesis uh, give uh, our, produce our menstrual period normally. Or around coronary after artery, after obstruction. For example, some infraction happened. And after that, this abil ability for angiogenesis, for ability for grow new blood vessels, we're talking about the capillary small blood vessels. Uh, this give ability to work, uh, take oxygen normally in the heart mu uh, muscles. Or for example, exercise muscle. Uh, the sportsmen, yes, they have more uh, muscles and it's understanding for if you have more muscles in the body, you need more oxygen. That's why our muscle produced no new growth, uh, new blood vessels, okay? This again, angiogenesis. Or uh, for example, malignant tumors. They also produced, uh, secrete some factors. The tumor secrete factors that activate angiogenesis to grow new blood vessels inside, inside the tissue. And these blood vessels give more oxygen and these tumors start to grow up uh, and will be bigger. This, for example, one of the treatment of the for the tumors, that's um, our, uh, that we, we can produce it to some fact, we need to uh, do some factors to stop this, secreting this, uh, factors by tumors who stop angiogenesis in tumor inside. It's one of the treatment. If we uh, in inhibit these uh, um, factors, uh, we can um, stop uh, the tumor growing. And also we can treat the uh, cancer by this way too. Uh, and the next, uh, tuck, tuck, tuck. and also for example, in my profession, um, after two lecture, I think after two subject, you will you will start to read about the uh, anatomy of the vessels. You will study the, um, which vessels you have, uh, the brachial artery, uh, I don't know, aortic uh, aortic arch, and etc. etc. You will learn more details the anatomy of the vessels in which uh, um, part you have. We, to say when you learn new vessel about the vessels you will understand that for example in the lower limb we have the main artery um from femoral artery and for example um the tibial arteries the big diameter arteries and um, <clears throat> if they will obstruct it 
uh, or some of the cathet, um, some factors start to uh, produce by our skin to grow or to give, uh, to start angiogenesis. This angiogenesis help people with diabetes, for example, to save their legs, uh, their eyes, kidneys, and etc. If the vessels was obstructed inside, there's the same mechanisms uh, that happen in the heart when a coronary artery obstructed. Uh, the same mechanism, uh, the same angiogenesis started in the lower and upper limb, in the um, kidney and other organs. Understanding this one? Guys, you hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. This angiogenesis is very important, guys. Uh, okay, now we can continue. Local control, okay, guys, was the active chemicals, reactive deprimy, and angiogenesis, three ones. Next one, it's neurocontrol blood vessels. Uh, when we discussed about neurocontrol, it's something sympathetic and parasympathetic yeah, innervation, we know. And here, uh, vessels under remote control by the central and autonomic neural system. Here, we will talk about the sympathetic control. Uh, sympathetic, if you remembered, epinephrine, norepinephrine. And here, the sympathetic control, um, they stimulate the constriction, constriction of the vessels. And uh, when we stop to um, pre stop, stop sympathetic innervation, the vessel will be delayed. Okay, when we activate sympathetic control, they constrict. When we inhibit it, they delay. Uh, we haven't uh, parasympathetic control in the vessels. For example, uh, when we talk about the cardiac output, we said we have parasympathetic as a, a nervous vagus innervation to the heart. But here in the vessels, we have only sympathetic control. When they when we activate it, they con they constrict it. We have as a construction. When we inhibit sympathetic control, they uh, we have as a dilation. Okay. Uh, так. <laughs> the late vessels in the skeleton, cardiac muscle to meet demands of self. Yeah, and also uh, that we should know that here they have different effects in different regions. For example, the sympathetic control mostly constrict, but the late vessels in the skeletal and cardiac muscle to meet demands of, of exercise. It's when we talk about the exercise. We will discuss more detail in the next lecture. Uh, skeletal, skeletal muscle um, vessels, because they have different um, mechanisms uh, in, during in rest and exercise. We will discuss more details about this. But mostly, uh, the sympathetic control have constriction effect. The, uh, also, we have when when you read about capillary beds, you know that we have precapillary sphincters. Do you remember we discussed about capillary beds that located mostly in the muscles and in the intestine? Remember? Yes. And here yes. we have capillary sphincters that respond only to local and hormonal control due lack of innervation. Uh, on the local. Local, we discuss here about the active chemicals and genetics and reactive hyperemia and hormonal, it's hormones, understand. But the motion center is an integrated center of three autonomic reflexes, baroreflex, chemoreflex, and bindulary ischemic reflex. We know about baroreflex and chemoreflex. Who remembered baroreflex? It's what? It uh, become about the pressures, baro mean like pressure. Where they like to... parallel reflexes, uh, where we have uh, what, uh, uh, common carotid arteries, teacher, and in the hour, yeah. Here, when we talk about the bar reflex, we discussed about the carotid arteries, carotid sinuses that located in the carotid arteries. Here, yes. This one, we have carotid sinuses, this, that located inside the uh, 
exter internal carotid artery wall here, and also in aortic arch wall, this one, two um, baroreceptors. And these baroreceptors that are located in the carotid sinuses or in aortic arch, uh, mostly about carotid sinuses, they send um, um, signals to buy glossopharyngeal nerve because in here we have the, the uh, in aorta they send due to vagus nerve uh, and here this glossopharyngeal uh, nerve signals inhibit sympathetic and cardiac and vasomotor neurons and reducing sympathetic tone. Um, tak, ta, 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 excite vagal fibers to the slowing of heart rate and cardiac output, those reducing blood pressure. If here, we can see here, if we have elevated blood pressure, our arteries stretch, and we know this, they like it in the our, uh, artery wall, they stretched by receptors increased firing rate, and cardio, we have cardio inhibitory neuron stimulation, that increased vagal tone, reduced heart rate, and reducing heart rate, we know the effect to reduce blood pressure. And the second one, it's, it's uh, how we reduce blood pressure by the heart. And the second one, we uh, these bioreceptors increase firing rate and the motor center will be in, in the bits. Uh, after that, the sympathetic tone, sympathetic um, signals will reduce Vaso, reduced vasomotor tone, and we have vasodilation. And this vasodilation also reduced our blood pressure. Okay, we reduced our blood pressure by this pyroreflex by two ways, by through the heart, uh, in the cardio, by the cardio inhibitory uh, stimulation and uh, by the vasomotor center inhibition. Yeah. But we should to know that body reflex is important in short-term regulation of blood pressure. For example, if patients have chronic hypertension, this body reflex never help because uh, if you have, we know hypertension, yes, when our blood pressure high. For example, normally it's 120, uh, 480, yeah, but millimeter of mercury. And here, the patient with hypertension have higher 140 or 150. If he, as a patient, have uh, this pressure, 140, 150, two days, this it means the next time, this is the sec, uh, in the third day, uh, this barrier reflex will um, so will thought that this pressure, 140, 150, it's normal, and start to um, activate only when. Uh, this pre pressure will be higher than 150, 160, for example, or 180. But for our body, 140, 150, it's also not normal. It's hypertension. This is why bioreflex is regulate only short term, short term regulation. For example, when you stand up fastly, or, or yeah, after lying, when you sleep, or um, when you. I don't know when in some um, short situation, okay, like ra rapid changing of posture, for example. Uh, take next. This understanding about my reflex. This one. Yeah, it's clear. Yes. Okay. Next one. Mm, here. I have a question, guys. Um, here in my lecture, I see only 18 students. Uh, it's, where is others? You came- I didn't uh, intend. What, uh? I didn't intend. Uh, what about other lectures? They accept other lecture? Or it's same in our lectures, teacher. Ah, and sometimes less than this number. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. okay. Okay. Mm. Next, uh, we can continue. Where is? Uh -huh. Next one. Uh, camera reflex. 
Hemoreflex, we know it's, uh, we discussed, yes, it's uh, automatic response to change of blood chemistry, pH, oxygen, and CO2. We thought, uh, we discussed it in the previous lecture, and they activate through the carotid body and aortic bodies. Yes, this one. Yes, this and this one. And carotid body located in external carotid artery, if you see here. And uh, chemo, it's understanding chemo receptor, uh, chemo reflex, it's because of chemo, uh, chemo receptors. And primary role of uh, chemo reflex is adjust respiration to change in blood chemistry. It means more detail, you discussed it, it's more detail connected with the respiration, with oxygen and CO2 changing. But the second role is vasomotion because uh, vasomotion motion can connected with uh, oxygen too yes because uh, co2 oh, oh, sorry oxygen and co2 connected with the respiration respiratory system because gas exchange and understanding it's connected with capillaries because uh, capillary exchange mostly important for co2 or to um, uh, changing and now if we have hypoxemia do you know what is it Hypoxemia when uh, oxygen decreased in tissue, it's hypoxemia. Hypercapnia, it's elevated CO2. It's hypercapnia. And acidosis, acidosis, it's when our pH decreased. This is acidosis. Okay, Hypoxy hypoxemia, hypercapnia, and acidosis. I think maybe you heard about these terms. Uh, also, we have hyper, uh, hypocapnia. Yeah, hypocapnia is opposite when CO2 decreased. Or uh, alkalosis, yes, when pH increased. Mm, but here we discussed about hypoxemia, hypercapnia, and acidosis. These three things telling us that we have less oxygen uh, in our blood. And uh, this is why these three things stimulate hemoreceptors and acting uh, was a motor center to uh, widespread was a constriction. We need increased blood pressure, increased lung perfusion, and that's why we increase gas exchange. And also it stimulates breathing, yes, because we have less oxygen and our brains think we need to breathe more harder to take oxygen. Tag. This uh, thing, why, uh, for example, why uh, if we have hypoxemia, we haven't was a dilation, yes, to uh, give more uh, oxygen for tissue. Why do we have as a constriction? This because uh, we, the main idea, we need oxygen and oxygen taken from the lung. And to increase lung perfusion, we need to increase blood pressure to take all this blood from the body for the lung. And the main, you see, every all effects, it's um, concentrated for the lung, lung perfusion. By the constriction in increasing of blood pressure happened for one, one purpose, for increasing lung perfusion and increase gas exchange in, in the lungs. This is why we discussed first three years, hemoreceptors mostly uh, connected with the respiratory system, with, connected with the oxygen directly. Okay. Okay, guys. You hear me? You hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Because I didn't see, I don't know why I didn't see you. I see only my screen. Uh, that medullary ischemic reflexes. Ischemic, do you know what is it? Yes, ischemia, it means per, uh, reduce of perfusion, yeah, insufficiency of perfusion. This is ischemia. And middlary ischemic reflex, it's automatic response to a drop in perfusion of the brain directly. And we have a uh, medulla oblongata that monitors its own blood supply. Medulla oblongata is also a very important thing. And this activates corrective reflexes when he sends, it sends ischemia. For example, um, 
when we have ischemia, our cardiac and vasomotor centers send sympathetic signals to heart and blood vessels. And we know, yeah, sympathetic signals, it means increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure and vasoconstriction. Here we see increasing heart rate and constriction force. Uh, because why it's happened? We need, it means if we have some ischemia in brain, we need to increase blood pressure because increasing blood pressure give more, more blood to the brain. We constrict our vessels because also it's connected with the, uh, it helps to uh, increase blood pressure. And also we take uh, all blood from the body to the brain because brain is more important uh, organ in our body. Uh, you, if you remember, oh, which move? Uh huh. Tag, guys. Yes. Uh, I have some problem. I will send you a new link, okay? Okay, please. Uh huh, please. Okay. I will send you a new link. All right, okay.